My name is Felga Raffin. I'm the uh, admissions officer here at IHS, uh, and I'll be hosting today's uh, IHS virtual information session, uh, introducing our infrastructure and smart cities specialization track, managing and developing physical and digital infrastructures for future proof cities. Uh, this is one of our um, flagship courses, but it's also been uh, redesigned and reimagined by uh, the, uh, the track coordinator, Lasse Heretz. Uh, who will talk about it in a bit more detail. Uh, so we're very excited to welcome you today on this uh, fourth webinar we have in the Urban Management Development webinar series. Um, and today we'll just walk you through a brief introduction of IHS and the programme, and then dig into some more um, uh, details of uh, research topics, uh, student uh, journeys and things like that, and answer a small Q&A session at the end as well. Move on to the next slide, please. Yes. So as I said, uh, I'm the admissions officer and I'll do a small introduction into uh, the background of the programme, sort of the ethos and how it's been uh, built. Um, and I will hand over then to uh, Dr. Lasse Heritz, who will talk a bit more about the course content uh, and its logic. Um, and then we'll get into some more practical details, talking about uh, how to prepare your application, uh, things to be considerate of, some important dates and practical questions. Uh, we, the presentation we prepared is about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, so we have a longer Q&A session at the end. So if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to write them down uh, in the chat function. Um, and I will circle back at the end and we'll go through them one by one. So uh, thank you very much. Let's get started. So um, as I said at the beginning, uh, the in Infrastructure and Smart City Specialization track is one of six specializations tracks within the uh, Urban Management and Development Masters course we have here at IHS. Uh, this is our flagship program. It very much represents sort of uh, the academic expertise and areas of research that we're interested in here as an institute. Um, so uh, it's a 12 month program uh, starting roughly at the end of September, beginning of, to of October every year. Uh, we welcome about 100 to 150 different um, urban professionals and specialists uh, across these six tracks. Um, and over that year, we go through a quite a intensive, but a very sort of um, form, uh, well formed out uh, academic program, which I'll walk you through now. Uh, block one uh, consists of sort of introducing key um, key theories and sort of backgrounds that are useful for all of our specialization tracks. Uh, these include sort of focuses on urban theories, um, ideas of how to uh, finance and draw investment into city programs, um, as well as sort of giving you a background in social science research methods. Uh, so the idea in block one is that we're giving you sort of a, a good basis of skills and sort of theories, whilst also giving you um, a, in a program of sort of general courses where you're exposed to different uh, tracks, not just your own track, which is, um, and then we move into block two, uh, where you'll be working more specifically within your desired focus. So you'll be in, of the 150 students, you'd probably be 20 to 30 students looking specifically at infrastructure and smart cities, uh, which, and so in block two, you're very much building towards um, your research topic um, and beginning for your field work, which will begin in March every year. The program has quite a long thesis period. Uh, this is for data collection and field work. Um, uh, leading to graduation in sort of September every year. Um, so now I'll pass over to Lasse, who can maybe talk about a bit more about the program in a bit more detail. Yeah, thanks, Virgo, and also from my side, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the session. I'm Lasse Gertz, I'm the academic director of this institute, and I'm also coordinating this uh, specialization or this focus, as, uh, as Virgo called it. So infrastructure, um, it drives our cities. It makes uh, sure that things move smoothly, that people get from one place to the other, but also that they have access to clean drinking water, uh, that there's proper sanitation, that uh, your energy is being supplied, that there are no blackouts. And as you all know, uh, since we're doing this online, the digital infrastructure matters uh, for pretty much too in shaping cities too these days. Where does it come from, um, our, our desire to develop infrastructures? The desire to develop infrastructures comes from a deeper desire towards a frictionless society, a society where moving around and going from one place to the other or, have, or having access for, to something comes at a very low cost, that it's easy to move yourselves around the city, that it's easy to look up things on the internet, that it is easy also to have your house powered, uh, to have access to clean drinking water, to uh, make sure that your waste is, coll is collected properly and all that. So in other words, uh, infrastructure is 
key to having our to, to the way our cities run. And yet developing infrastructures are is really, really very, very complex. Why is it complex? Well, first of all, um, we're talking about complex technologies that need to be implemented. It takes a tremendous amount of time to do that. It takes a tremendous amount of time to plan it, to design it, to have the required permits, to have the money available. And so what we see when we look at infrastructures is that it's, 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 it's a prolonged development period and it may take 30 years between a, a, a first plan, initial plan uh, and the final product. And in between, society may have changed already. And the second thing that we see when we look at infrastructure development is that the, the cost and quality and uh, the time that is needed to do these things are often out of control. So we notice that their politicians and local administrators alike have a great desire to develop these big infrastructures. And yet at the same time, when they do so, they run out of budget, they run out of time, and oftentimes the thing that is being delivered is uh, perhaps not as great as it was originally uh, emphasized. The other thing is that um, developing an infrastructure is one thing, it's complex already, but maintaining it and keeping it running is another uh, important aspect that's often neglected. When we think about building infrastructures, we also need to think about how to maintain it and how to keep it running. I can build you a very shiny new technology but it does not mean anything if no one takes care of that shiny new technology. So that's also something we want to talk about, maintenance. Um, another thing that makes infrastructure development so complex is that um, it's done oftentimes without much fault. If you look at the picture on the right of your screen, you see the expressways in Bangkok, and you'll notice that um, these are this is a three layer road. If you add more layers, if you need, if you add more roads, if you add more lanes, it's not going to change anything. One of the big mistakes we made in the past is thinking that more roads would lead to less congestion, whereas in reality, building more roads simply leads to more congestion. This is just one example of how complex it can be to think ahead and to deal with, um, with these infrastructures. And last but not least, I should also mention that for many, um, infrastructures also represent a kind of a a sublime thing, a new toy, something that you can show off with. Uh, call it a high-speed railway, for example, from the 1970s, or perhaps a smart city initiative. So in other words, planners are always are sometimes mistaken by thinking that the shiny new technology will deliver something. However, that shiny new technology sits within a complex society that has demands, that changes, that has certain pressures, social, economic, and cultural um, contexts that matter to how this infrastructure is used, plans, etc., etc. So what we do in this specialization is we talk about these things. We, we try to figure out what, uh, how, how infrastructure is made, how it can be planned, how you can do the contracts, how you can evaluate it and all that. But we will also think about other deeper questions such as, should you be doing this? And that takes me to uh, the next point then if the slides wish to cooperate with me, which they do, finally. Um, what can you expect if you follow this specialization? So come January next year, you will see that we do two things in this particular program. On the practical side, we will talk about the following topics. We will talk about contracting governance. So there are various ways in which you can do the contracting of this project. Um, we will talk about the management planning and development, under what conditions can these things be successful? We will also talk about maintenance, as I said. Um, and this will come from an applied perspective. So we will give you insights into how it is done in this side of the world, at the other side of the world. Uh, we will talk you to different forms of contracting. We also will talk you through different forms of uh, infrastructure evaluation, because once the thing is built and put into place, we also need to find out if we have done this properly. Can we learn from it? Um, there's no use in coming over to the Netherlands and looking at the shiny technology here and then going back and thinking that you can do it straight right there in your own country. No, you have to also take into account the fact that you're building it in a different context. And so, in other words, um, you also need to be able to learn from doing this. But we don't, do not only want to focus on the practical side of things. We also want to, want to ask you to reflect on the questions that you see in the middle of the screen. 
um, should you be, uh, be building an infrastructure rather than can you build it? And if we are dealing with technology, then how should we understand this relationship between humans and technology? Are we, for example, not, uh, are we doing the right thing if we build more roads? Are we not therefore encouraging a kind of mobility that is not sustainable in the long run? I want you to think about that. And so we will, develop, we will also offer you the conceptual tools that you need to understand this relationship that you, that you need in order to uh, engage with this deeper reflection as to how we relate to infrastructure and uh, what it means to actually develop infrastructure. The how in questions are important, but in the end, this is a master's degree. So it's an academic institute, an, an academic program that you follow at the academic institute. And so in other words, you, we also want to foster that reflective stance. The program is open for many people from many different disciplines. We encourage that, but one thing I want to make sure is ultimately we don't teach you how to build a bridge and we don't teach you how to build a sewage system. So it is not a technical program. It's really about the management and the governance of these infrastructures. The, um, the, this part is specialization um, covers uh, uh, a couple of months of your program. The other parts of the program, as Fergal already pointed out, are joint and have different focus. Ultimately, you as a student, you will specialize yourself. The, for the, the program, as I'm presenting here, will give you an opportunity to scout for the topics that you find really interesting. The master thesis is the moment where you become a specialist. For example, you may be really interested in high-speed railways. You can get some first ideas in the courses that I just showed you, and then you will use the master thesis to develop your ideas in depth. And we will support you with that, and we will supervise your thesis. So who are we then? Well, let's have a look at the team that does this with you. On the left side, that gentleman, that's me. You already met me, so I don't need to introduce you, uh, introduce myself to you again. Um, and then next to that is Dr. Sofia Pagliarin. She will be the main instructor in this program um, Professor Parlierin is a specialist on smart city technology and on uh, local governance uh, in, in conjunction with that smart technology. Dr. Carly Penning will be another instructor. She will talk you through public-private partnerships and forms of contracting and issues of governance. So whatever you need to know about the ways in which these projects can be um, contracted and how to deal with stakeholders and how to deal with complaints and what have you not then uh, Dr. Penning will help you with that. Julia Skinner uh, will talk you through all the ins and outs of waste treatment, uh, solid waste treatment, and will tell you, explain to you how this is done and how you should deal with it. And last but not least, Soma Sharma will explain everything you need to know about accessibility, because mind you, ladies and gentlemen, we often talk about infrastructure as, a, as an artifact, as a piece of equipment that you can use. But in reality, the problem is not accessible, uh, is not if you have a car to drive it, the problem is about accessibility and mobility. And the answer could very well be that the road and the car is not necessary and we could do something else. The people who are now listening to this talk and who are doing this from the comfort of their homes by internet will know exactly that sometimes traveling is not necessary at all. So these are the people. Now, what does the program look like? I'll show you. Um, the program runs for seven, uh, seven to eight weeks. And we do approximately 28 sessions. I say approximately because sometimes we have a guest speaker. And of course, we want a guest speaker to come in. So we have another session. So don't sue me if it's 29 instead of 28. OK, <laughs> let's make that as a deal. We've got four modules that run in parallel each week. So every day, we do one session in one of the modules. Two of those modules are applied. They're on the contracting side, on the governance side. They are on the side of managing and evaluating uh, infrastructures. And we do two modules that are more theory oriented. They talk about our relationship to technology. They talk about the, um, the complexities of implementing those projects and so on. And of course, these four modules are related. So the topics you receive week after week are all related. We have many cross cutting themes. Um, we will not have one separate topic on, I don't know, for example, uh, building energy networks but we will use those examples throughout the, all the modules. So that is, in short, is what your program will look like. What else will we do? Well, we will organize field trips with you too, so you can get inspired and have fun. Um, 
the ones that we normally do is we take you to the milestone storm surge barrier, which is uh, which should be found uh, to the west of Rotterdam. It's a um, it's a massive storm barrier that protects uh, the hinterlands from flooding. Um, people always tell me it's so impressive because it's, these are things are bigger than the Eiffel Tower, and I agree the size is impressive. But what I find much more impressive, to be honest is that there's no human decision making involved in the operation of the thing. It's the computer that decides when to open, when to close. So in other words, this is a real example of a smart city technology. And it better be good, otherwise we are swimming here. The other things we want to show you uh, are smaller projects, the duck park or the water plant, for example. These are projects where uh, local planners have tried to combine different so types of infrastructures to have multiple functions at the same time. For example, the waterplane serves as a yard where you can play around. If you have a skateboard, please take it along with you because there's a, there's a lot of room to skate. But also in terms of bad weather, in terms of bad weather, which tends to happen quite a bit here in the Netherlands, it serves as um, an overflow protection. The dog park, likewise, is a really, really nice park with shopping underneath, but at the same time, also a water barrier. So we will show you these projects to, to demonstrate how functions can be combined to talk about the, mod, the, the models, uh, the business models underneath it, the ways they've been developed and contracts and all that. And last but not least, we'll try to take you to the traffic planning department of our local transport uh, uh, company, the RET, uh, to show you what they do in terms of keeping that system running every day, how they plan and how, how they do the uh, maintenance also of, of the entire system. It's a, it's a very interesting system that you've got many trams running, but also a very extensive metro network um, that runs basically a metro every three minutes. So it's a high pressure environment. It's really, really nice to observe and to ask questions. Um, the, the field trips are of course on the condition that COVID uh, allows us to go there. So again, it's a promise from our side, but um, don't be disappointed if we have to change that because of COVID restrictions. Just want to mention that, not to kill the joy here, but you know how COVID is. So what does it do for you? Well, first of all, I find it really important that studying this program turns you into an independent thinker. So when you return to your home country, um, that uh, you do not only have a better idea of what you want to achieve in terms of infrastructure in your cities, but that you also know exactly what kind of questions you need to ask, that you are critical when it comes to approaching stakeholders, that you are critical when it comes to someone offering you a business model. Um, too often uh, we see in, uh, in the Global South, but elsewhere too, but also in the Global South, companies trying to take over parts and pieces of the, of the infrastructures, therefore privatizing something that is uh, uh, ultimately a public good. And so I want you to go back and also consider that. It's an intense program. That it means that um, we meet every day and uh, you'll, be, uh, you'll be given assignments to work on. There's uh, literature to read, there are sites to visit, there are little research projects and all that. So um, yeah, I, 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 this, I simply want to prepare your mind that you will be occupied. You'll get your, your money worth of the cheek. Um, thirdly, of course, uh, IHS uh, represents a very international community. The, uh, the teachers that I just showed you all come from different countries, but not only that, all your fellow students are from different places all across the world. There's, there are very few programs in the world, uh, world that are as international as the one that IHS offers you. And last but not least, we give you this access to all the knowledge that we have. We have people who have worked in many projects all across the globe. We have academics who have done the research and the analysis, and we all combine that in this particular program. So that, that in a nutshell is what we're doing. And with that out of the way, I would like to return to Fergal, please, for the last bit, and then we go to the Q&A. Thanks very much, Lessing. So something that uh, I've been very happy that Lasse brought up already was uh, the international makeup of the classroom. Um, something that we would really cannot overstress is the, the real variety and the dynamism within the classroom. Uh, so of these 150 students, uh, as I said, normally constitutes one um, cohort of the Urban Management Development Master. Um, this class will contain civil engineers, it will contain economists, it will contain architects, 
Um, of these 150 students, we typically have at least 50 different uh, countries or nationalities uh, within that classroom. Uh, similarly, a lot of our students are coming with um, um, a certain degree of prior experience. This isn't something that um, is a requirement for IHS students, but it very much um, constitutes what an uh, urban manager looks like, someone who already has a, um, a background within a specific area, who's coming to IHS to gain a postgraduate degree um, qualification, normally to move into a management position or to reorient their, their career to be more effective uh, delivering an urban um, intervention. So this might be uh, a background in waste management, this might be someone looking at sort of uh, the circular economy or uh, renewable uh, interventions um, that are really looking to uh, develop an understanding of how um, smart cities or infrastructure could be an orientation to come solve this problem. Um, so of these students' profiles, like I said, it's extremely varied. Uh, there's no one type of IHS student, we always say. Um, and so uh, we're looking for uh, um, all stripes of urban development, um, urban, urban professionals. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so just moving to some practical matters. Um, as we said, it's a 12-month program. Uh, this is, uh, uh, as uh, Lassie pointed out, it's quite an intensive program, but we do this deliberately. Uh, we really want to give you as much in the way of uh, theoretical and practical knowledges um, in a short period of time, because most of our students really want to get out into uh, uh, the labour market sort of as soon as possible uh, and apply what they've, uh, they've learned from our specialists. Uh, the program runs from September to um, August every year. Uh, so we're accepting applications now, but the application period runs all the way up through the summer, um, through until June, June and July. Um, the tuition fee is a flat weight tuition fee, so it's a good number to get, keep in mind now of 14,900. Uh, bearing that in mind though, there is an early bird discount for anyone who applies before uh, April 15th uh, and pays before the 1st of June, uh, we will offer a 1,000 euro uh, tuition fee waiver. Um, something I would also say is that um, we do our very best in the admissions uh, uh, team to keep an up-to-date scholarship and funding database. Uh, you can find this and access it on our website at any time. Uh, it's just listed there. Um, th and the early bird discount that I, re that I reference um, can be combined with any other partial uh, tuition fee waivers that you might secure from private from uh, private bodies. So uh, we understand that uh, becoming an international student is uh, there's a huge amount of logistical things to consider. There's a huge amount of practical matters to be considerate of. So it's good to start thinking about your application now and questions about finances as well. Please check out that database on our website. But also, if you have questions, we're always happy to answer those uh, in the admissions office as well. Uh, equally, to explore the program, uh, just go to that ihs.nl forward slash umd to go through all of the tracks uh, individually in detail. Um, so moving on to preparing your application. Um, as I said, there's, there's um, the, the admissions period is very long uh, and we'll be taking applications for uh, the next seven or eight months. Uh, but it's very important to start that, thinking about how to make your um, application sort of attractive now. Um, we have... Um, Generally, we're looking for a number of different criteria to be met. Um, so a solid academic um, uh, performance. Uh, this would look like a 2-1 in sort of a British uh, qualification or sort of a grade of sort of um, 80 out of 100. So anything that sort of constitutes a, a B look or looking at equivalent level uh, qualifications. Um, what we're really looking for is um, an ability or a de demonstrated interest in the urban in urban development or in um, uh, those sorts of interventions. So this might uh, be through professional experience, this might be through uh, voluntary work that you've done, um, but also an ability to interact and show that you can work within teams. Um, a big thing that we focus on at IHS is actually uh, group work. And so sort of those soft skills that develop uh, into sort of effective uh, govern governance figures or sort of managers in the public realm are very sort of uh, valuable. Uh, all of our students are required to have a bachelor's degree certificate. Uh, we won't be able to accept students with an, a qualification which isn't um, a BA or a BSc qualification. Uh, similarly, we are looking for um, a base level of sort of English ability. Um, this will be an IELTS score of 6.5 um, or um, evidence that you've previously completed a qualification in the English, in, in the English language. Next slide, please. Great. So uh, that was just a small overview of the program. I know it's a lot of information, but I hope uh, me and Lasse have been helpful so far. Um, 
And uh, at the end of the presentation and at the Q&A, I will provide my um, contact details. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to send them to me. Um, if I can't answer them directly, then I can forward these on to Lasse also. So what I'll do now is I will uh, scroll all the way up to the top of the chat and me and Lasse will do our best to uh, answer your questions for you. Okay. Um, can I apply for more than one course? So this is um, it's a simple question, but it's a really helpful question and something uh, good to be clear on now. Um, when you make an application to any of our programs, you will need to decide on the track that you're interested in at the time of application. Um, uh, you won't be able to change that decision uh, and we will be assessing your application for that particular course. And the admissions office works together with our academic coordinators uh, like uh, Lasse and we make an informed decision on who would be uh, correct for a specific track. So please do be very considerate that you apply for the right program for you um, and that your application is tailored to the course content that we've sort of gone through and that's listed on our website. Um, you are a pay, um, allowed to apply for more, more than one course, but we always advise against it. Um, we would normally ask you to apply next year if you're interested in a different course, because we really want to assess your eligibility for this particular program. Okay. Um, so Mira asks, do I need to have prior experience in infrastructure? Um, uh, I mean, all I would say, I'll hand over to Lasse to maybe answer this in a bit more detail, but um, we really are looking, if you look at the admissions requirements, we're looking at a composite value. So it's not just about if you have prior experience or you have a, a very high GPA, we're really looking for a demonstrated uh, interest within the field um, and sort of someone that can really contribute to sort of classroom discussion based on that sort of interest. Maybe Lasse, you can uh, add on that a little bit. Yeah, thank, thanks, Virgil. I will add that your explanation was spot on. So I've, <laughs> in that sense, nothing much to add. So we, it, it's not mandatory that you have prior experience. It helps, but under if you if you have the other qualifications, Virgil just said, then you're equally welcome. Um, as said, you especially you specialize yourself mostly in the master in the, in the stage of the master thesis. So yes, this program will prepare you for that. But if you want to delve deeper into a certain topic, then the master thesis is the moment to really specialize you in one direction or, or the other. Thanks, Lasse. Maybe, and what I'll, the next question I think would be good for you as well. Um, someone is interested in the circular economy. Uh, does this program look at the circular economy? Um, I know it's obviously a, a big topic within urban development. Um, so it's always good to get an idea which track would be the best one for that. Yes, thanks. Thanks for asking that question. I, I can see where that question came from, because originally, a couple of years ago, this program was infrastructure and green cities, and it dealt with circular economy, too. That has changed a little. Um, first of all, to as far as I'm concerned, every infrastructure needs to deliver a greener and more su sustainable city. So I don't think that's a separate topic uh, at all. Um, the, the other thing is that we spend more time, more attention now to smart city technologies. And since we cannot do all the topics all at once, something had to give. Uh, fortunately, though, circular economies and sustainability is something that is now much more prominent in the entire program. We have a separate specialization on, on sustainability. So if, if, you, if that's really your thing, you can go there. But we also in, uh, offer courses that are on this topic in the, uh, the core period, which starts in, uh, in September. So in other words, it's no longer a, a topic of one specialization. It is something that is happening throughout the program. Thanks so much, Lasse. Um, so I've got another question here. How many international students uh, do you admit to this program annually? Okay, it's another um, very good sort of practically focused question. Um, something that I would stress to students is we do receive something like um, well over a thousand applications a year for our UMD program. Um, our admissions rate is well under 50%. Um, and so it is a very competitive program. Um, saying it uh, that though, we really are not, um, we don't have quotas. Um, everyone will be admitted that meets our entry criteria. Um, and so we do, uh, there are many students, sort of four to 500 students are admitted every year. Um, and these are, in, this is from an entirely um, international base. As I said, the classroom will te technically be um, 40 to 50 nationalities spread across uh, the whole, the entire globe. Um, and it's almost entirely international. So uh, we maybe have one to two Dutch stu students in the classroom every year, um, but really it's, um, it's uh, hugely diverse and varied in sort of, of its composition. Okay, uh, Natalia asks, is there a focus on green infrastructure? Um, 
and what areas of research are being completed by the infrastructure team. Okay, so uh, these are separate questions, so maybe I'll break them down. Um, maybe we, uh, last year, can you say what uh, research is being done uh, within the within the infrastructure team currently that might be something to bear in mind when picking a master's topic? Yeah, exactly. So just to give a couple of examples here, uh, one a big project is currently on um, the use of smart city technologies in conjunction with uh, stakeholder involvement and democratization of decision making in cities. So in other words, how can we use smart city technologies uh, to promote uh, more democracy? Uh, another project that we're currently working on is the evaluation of um, urban and infrastructure transformation over a very long period of time. And we ask ourselves the question, under what conditions are these transformations successful? Noticing that some cases that look very similar deliver very dissimilar results. Sometimes you, you're you led to believe that because you're looking at a similar case, it will have a similar outcome, but we notice differences and we want to figure out why this is so. And then we have smaller, these are big projects, of course. And then we have smaller projects to uh, looking into the performance of infrastructures, uh, looking into development of uh, smart city technology as such, or uh, in particular machine learning and uh, big data algorithms. So basically all the topics that you have seen in the program uh, are being covered by our team. Great, thank you so much, Lasse. Um, uh, I, I'm seeing some sort of trends um, emerging within the questions and I'll be, I'm, so, I'm very impressed with them. I think they're very um, sort of thoughtful questions. Um, Lasse, there's a question here about how quantitatively focused the program is. I mean, maybe it's good to say is smart cities something is sort of focused specifically from a quantitative focus or is that a more of a mixed message approach? Yeah, mixed methods for sure. So no worries, it's not just quantitative. Um, I need to point out that in the uh, when, if you follow the program, that no matter the specialization you do, you have to take courses in qualitative and quantitative uh, methods. So students will be acquainted with both sides. Uh, what we're doing this special, specialization in particular is neither just qualitative nor just quantitative. We use mixes. Sometimes it helps to look at statistical data, for example, when it comes to the performance of projects and statistical analysis would be really great. But sometimes you want to delve into a one particular case study on smart cities, um, and then it really helps to have this qualitative focus. So it's 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 really not one way or the other, it's not black and white. You will be trained in both because that is part of our um, end goals, our, our intended learning outcomes. Great, thank you so much, Lasse. Um, so Mira asks, do you have any examples of any assignments that will be done uh, and how are the classes going to be because of the pandemic? Okay, uh, so Mira, something to maybe say uh, just on a on a COVID note. Um, you know, we can't see the future. And, uh, we definitely it would be irresponsible to make um, proclamations about how things will be. We can only re uh, react to government um, advice and guidance. Uh, but something to say is that um, as IHS is very small in the classroom size, uh, and because you'll be doing a lot of your uh, learning within your sort of specific tracks. Um, we typically have classroom size, a lot of the track specific learning will be uh, in small classrooms of sort of uh, 10 to 20 students. Um, so if social distancing is the only requirement that's required, we can very easily deliver that within uh, classrooms with uh, specific planning. Um, but saying that, um, uh, we didn't go fully online uh, at the height of the pandemic, we were providing us a blended version of, um, of learning. Uh, so hopefully that would be something that we can do again. Um, but obviously we can only uh, we can only do as we're advised at the time. Um, assignments of uh, examples of any assignments that will be done. Um, I don't know if I could speak to assignments. Uh, Lasse, do you have anything in mind? Yeah, we do assignments for starters. Yes, for sure. Um, I'm, I cannot, uh, I would be happy to share them with you right now, but I'm not sure if that is useful. It would be uh, pretty boring and tedious. But, you know, an example of what we, for example, we could ask you is to compare a couple of cases on a certain outcome, and then we will ask you to, in, to explain to us using that comparison why something worked in one case and why something did not work in the other case. And that sounds very straightforward, but the trick is that, as I just said, some of these cases look very similar. So it's really hard to, to explain why it worked why, uh, out in one context and did not work in the other context. And that could be an example of a quick assignment that we ask you to do. 
Uh, there's obviously other assignments uh, includes the uh, formal exams. Um, these can be sometimes they are, they, are, they are open book exams. So this this particular program also ends with an open book exam. Um, but other courses uh, also have different forms of, uh, of testing. Um, with regards to to the open book exam, I can tell you that that usually sounds easy on paper, but in reality, is, it is not. It's, it's actually pretty, pretty tough to do because we're not testing if you can memorize stuff. Um, your master students, if you come into this program, so we all assume that you can memorize stuff. What we want to know is, do you understand what you're talking about? Do you know how to apply this? Can you reflect on this? And so that will be the nature of most assignments. Rather than just explaining to me or summarizing to me what is on page 35, I just want you to, I want to know from you if you understand what's on page 35. So that is, will be the nature of the assignments. Thanks very much, Lasse. And I think maybe, Mira, when you say assignments, because it's, are you talking about the methodology or sort of the research out of the outcomes of the assessment? Um, something that we would say is, um, as Lasse has pointed out, a big focus on it is um, the governance side of it. It's about negotiations, about lobbying, it's about changing people's minds. Um, so there is a lot of practical learning. So that might be uh, a simulated learning, uh, action planning workshops are a big part of the program. So uh, definitely some practical sides and uh, some academic sort of assessment as well. Um, Amir asks, my master thesis was done about TOD. I'm interested in transportation. Um, I wanted to get a second master in infrastructure. Okay, to look at a PhD. Okay, so someone who's uh, very thoughtful and already thought about what they're sort of interested in. Um, may I ask uh, that with an urban planning background, bachelor's and a master's in urban regional planning, am I eligible for this master? Um, so maybe I can just say from a um, from an from an admission side, um, you certainly would have something that I would uh, describe as um, interest within the field. Um, I understand fully that you're sort of committed to the area of sort of urban development, um, and so I would think you would put forward a very um, uh, a very competitive application. So I'm not worried about um, your eligibility. I'm sure that you're eligible. But something that I'd be very interested in you to um, explain in your motivational statement is how would you benefit from a second master's degree? Um, there's a question of why would you be continuing to go through um, the program? So I would really expect you to have gone deep into the uh, course handbook, find out what we offer within this track and how it would benefit you. And ho hopefully, um, we admit you on that basis because uh, we would certainly like to look at sort of uh, what areas of PhD research you might be interested in. Yeah, exactly. Let me add to that. If, if your plan is to go for a PhD, then why not go for a PhD at start? And so I would like to also direct your attention to the fact that we have a PhD program. Um, if you go on the website under uh, teaching, you will find that there is a PhD program. Just look it up and see if it already applies to you. Of course, you're you're completely free also to apply for the uh, master's program, but then you have to fulfill Virgo's requirement and explain to us why a second uh, master's degree is going to help you. Um, but if you're ambitious, there's a PhD program. So thanks, Virgo. Thanks so much, Lasse. Um, and equally, um, yeah, um, well, we can talk about the PhD in another webinar, maybe. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, do you have funding specific to the infrastructure program? Okay, uh, thank you very much for that question. Um, uh, I would just draw your attention to the scholarship database that we have on our website. So uh, we do our best to keep it updated, but it is designed to sort of uh, cover um, as broad a spectrum as, po as possible to be helpful to uh, everyone that goes on our website. Um, so we know it's not exhaustive. Uh, we really are completely happy to support um, uh, new funding options. So if you come to us because you found someone who is working in the field of infrastructure development that would um, sponsor um, your education, uh, we would happily provide funding letters, we could uh, work on sort of facilitating that. Uh, but we don't know of any funding specific uh, within a field. Um, lots of our students do come through professional sponsorship, uh, they'll take sabbatical from their employer, um, and they'll be sent to um, um, uh, and they'll be sent to us to complete a specific research project. So that's something that we can uh, definitely do. Um, I see there's a question about my contact details. So the admissions office details are at the end of the presentation. So uh, you're welcome to contact the admissions office and I will be checking that every day for further questions. Okay, Amorena asks, um, if I went to architecture major in my bachelor's degree, could I sign to this program? Um, so as I said, Amorena, uh, we're really looking at um, uh, composite value for when we look at um, uh, applications. Uh, 
being an architect doesn't uh, make you eligible nor ineligible, but we're looking at how your background in architecture could be made relevant to the field of um, infrastructure um, in your application. Um, something I would say is that maybe 20% of our students are probably come from an architecture background um, and are looking to um, reorient their careers out of sort of a design path into more of a sort of um, intervention led path. Um, but yeah, it certainly wouldn't make you ineligible. Um, lots of uh, architects in your classroom, Lasse? Sorry, Gun. Are there lots of architects in your classroom? Some, not many, but some, and uh, it's it's really possible. It's as Fergal said, um, because architecture is also very broad, and it really depends on your specialization, the things you focused on, the other courses you took. So, it, um, as Fergal said, it, it, re it really can match in under certain conditions. Thanks very much, Lasse. So, Majida asks, is there any chance for students take, uh, applying for this program as their second master's to be accepted? Uh, Majida, I'm not sure if I understand your question, so if you could um, be a bit more specific, I can try and answer it. Um, you're welcome to apply for as many programs as you want, um, and uh, applying for this or different Erasmus University programs will not be uh, taken into account. Uh, what I would say is we will uh, be conscious if you've applied for this program and numerous other tracks. Uh, we would, uh, it wouldn't make you ineligible, but we would be very dubious about your motivations. Um, and we would ask you to really only make one application for the track that you can demonstrate the most interest in um, to sort of make your application as um, attractive as possible. So Benson asks, does this train track us to lead towards sustainability, greener cities and renewable energy? Um, I certainly hope so. Uh, Lasse, could you maybe uh, speak to this? Yeah, th thanks for that question. I, I love the question. We get it more often um, as if these are two different things. So um, the way we teach uh, this infrastructure development is that it's all geared towards making cities more sustainable, greener um, and smarter, which is a very trendy word nowadays, but actually means uh, you know, that we do away with some of the negative exter externalities of the way we run cities these days. So yes, we're future oriented. And um, um, we, which is why we're not uh, we're, we're not going to teach you to build many highways or something because that is not a sustainable form of transport. But in your city, you may have to deal with highways. So we will talk about how you can do this. Um, in short, really, infrastructure is a conduit towards a more sustainable city, and that's that's basically what we're after. Thanks so much, Lasse. Um, so that was Benson. Matthew asks, does this program address funding projects, budgeting and acquiring from within public works or community initiatives? Fantastic question, Matthew. Um, Lasse, could you speak to this maybe? Yeah, the answer is yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, yes, um, something that, um, that one of the first programs that you'll do within the first track is um, uh, managing uh, uh, infrastructure and um, uh, acquiring uh, funding. So we are very much, look, it is very practically focused. You are very much looking at how do funding negotiations go? How, um, what are the sort of uh, swings and roundabouts of them and how do they make, how do they go that way? To, how do you sort of draw investment? Um, so there is definitely a focus on this. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, uh, Carly Pennings, who you've seen in the team presentation is has 25 years of doing these projects, of being a consultant to this project. So she has a wealth of information that she can share with you all. Um, yeah, no doubt about it. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, how, how do you ensure that applications are processed early for purposes of one search for scholarship? Because some of us have applied for some courses that's taken two months now with no response. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that question. Something that I would we would say is all of the admissions uh, dates and deadlines have been particularly programmed into the year, um, so that they can um, everyone has as much time as possible to apply for our main uh, funding bodies. This will be the World Bank. This will be the Nuffolk Scholarship. Um, this will be any number of sort of bilateral agreements that um, the Dutch Ministry for Foreign Affairs has with external bodies. So we have planned these out specifically so that you can um, apply for different funding bodies with lots of time. So if you've already applied, I would expect you to be getting your admission letters in the next couple of weeks uh, because we know a lot of the funding options begin before the Christmas break. Um, so if you're waiting on a decision, that's not a problem. Contact the admissions office and we can give you uh, details on when you can receive your decision. Um, thank you for that. Um, okay. 
So, am I, okay, so everyone's saying thank you, so hopefully that was very helpful. Um, Amir asks, because my master's in urban planning doesn't satisfy me in infrastructure, I just had one transportation course. Okay, um, Amir, if you're really focused on uh, the PhD, um, I'd recommend that you follow up with the admissions office directly because uh, the feedback on these questions are very specific towards the PhD um, and we could really sort of tailor it to your specific background. But as you saw from the presentation, um, we are very much focused on transportation. Uh, there's a lot of specialization within the faculty in that area. So um, I would be hopeful that there would be someone suitable to supervise your research in that area if that's what you would like to do. Yeah, transportation, mobility, and and smart infrastructures, right? So just to, to also cap that up. Also, incidentally, I happen to be uh, to lead the PG program. So if you have uh, any detailed questions about it, feel free to reach out. Um, Fergal can give you the contact details, and then uh, we can talk about it. Great. Okay, so Benson asks, as a follow up to this question, does this track train us towards sustainability? Yeah. Um, is the infrastructure and smart cities track the best one that prepares us to bring these events back to our countries? Um, you're still deciding which track. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll um, ask Lassie to talk about that one in detail, but just to say the most common uh, dilemma students have at this sort of um, juncture is deciding which track is for them. So maybe you're interested in uh, sustainability, but you want to do it from a, uh, from a lens of sort of infrastructure. Um, you're caught between two schools. Um, if hopefully these webinars help answer those questions for you, but we're always happy to answer these questions on an individual basis too. Um, Lastly, we'll talk about it in detail, but something to also say as well is um, you won't be confined within your specific discipline. If your thesis traverses two topics, we can provide supervision from within two topics. That's not a problem. So if it's sustainability and housing, that's something we can do. If it's infrastructure and economic development, that's something we can do. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll give it to Lasse to answer in more detail. Well, exactly, Fergan. I think you made an excellent summary there. So, as said, uh, sustainability is a common theme in many of our courses because we cannot think about city development or infrastructure development without thinking about sustainability. So, as such, you will encounter it throughout the year. And the master thesis it gives you an opportunity to become a specialist in something. And as Fergal said, we can combine different supervisors from different disciplines to help you with that. And then naturally, if, you, if you're really just interested in sustainability, then we have a very good specialization uh, for that. And um, then I would recommend you, you go for that one. If, however, you really want to focus on infrastructure within the context of sustainability, then the current track may be something for you. Um, but as Fergal said, don't, don't worry about it too much. You will encounter different topics uh, anyhow, because we also have shared a shared core period. And there's the master thesis that gives you room to to research to investigate whatever you know if you feel is important to you yeah thanks very much lasse yeah uh we are very much focused on um the interdisciplinary nature of, in, of urban development so we definitely don't keep you within your little camp um but something to say is obviously you, the you will receive your qualification within the your, your qualification will be in infrastructure and smart cities so something you may want to already be thinking about is if that's your professional trajectory then maybe that's the kind of qualification you would like before um when you're thinking about where to apply and possibly get your graduate your certificate from so i'm seeing lots of thank you messages which is great to see i hope me and Lasse have been helpful today um, we have a couple more minutes, but I think uh, we're uh, sort of ready to wrap up. Um, the contact details have already been given in the chat, but I think the next slide has uh, more contact details, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, obviously, check our website if you have any questions. You can find both Lasse and the rest of the academic um, profiles on our website, alongside the uh, details on how to contact me or my colleagues in the admissions office. Um, so yes, I hope that was helpful. Thank you everyone for your time today. Thank you Lasse for um, also giving your time and uh, answering all these questions in so much depth. Um, but otherwise, I think we'd like to thank you for your time and uh, we hope to uh, welcome you to IHS sometime next year. Thank yes. you very much. Thanks a lot from my side too. Thanks, cheers.